Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Gold, joining you a day before Arsenal return to action in the Premier League, heading up to Burnley tomorrow early afternoon. Kick-off getting the Premier League weekend underway. I will be heading up to Turf Moor. Uh, looking forward to that long four-hour journey tomorrow. But any of you who know me or watch my live broadcast know that is plenty of time to listen to some talking at Sopranos podcast. So I'm not too disappointed. Anyway, this isn't a Sopranos uh, YouTube channel, although saying that probably uh, should be because it's the greatest TV program of all time. Um, but anyway, I'm sure there's loads of those you can go and watch, so I'm not going to rattle on about it. Let's talk about Arsenal because that's why you are all here. I'll just start quickly. Just a little uh, bit from Mikel Arteta ahead of the Burnley game then. Just going to a little bit of a transfer roundup. Uh, give my opinion on some of the latest rumours doing around. Also a little bit about an interview I've just done with Steve Morrow, which uh, first part of it was published on Gold today. I will drop the link of that interview into the comment section below, so please do give it a read. He talks about there, obviously Steve Morrow was former head of youth recruitment at Arsenal and worked in the senior scouting department as well for a long, long time, left last year. Um, this part of the interview talks about his time as uh, head of youth recruitment and some of the players he very close to signing for Arsenal in including Jaden Sancho and Christian Pulisic. He also talks about Bukai Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe when they progress through from Hell End and losing Serge Gnabry and things like that. So please do read that interview down below if you feel like it. It's, uh, it's well worth it, if I do say so myself. And there is another part of that interview to come in the next couple of days as well. And then I'll get back to the Burnley game uh, talk about the latest team news, give my predicted 11, that sort of thing. Right, let's get going, shall we? Just quickly on Burnley, some of Mikel Arteta's comments ahead of that game. Obviously full, fully aware of the challenge Arsenal are going to face at Turf Moor. He says, it's a really tough match. I think it's remarkable what the club, Sean Dyche and the coaching staff have done in recent years with the resources that they have, the style of play they've implemented and how well they execute it and how efficient they are. It's always really tough to play against them at home. It was a tricky game because we played with 10 men and we ended up losing on a set piece, which is a big part of the game. So hopefully we can have a different result this time. Obviously, that really disappointing defeat at the home at the hands of Burnley at the Emirates uh, in that miserable run Arsenal had in November and December. That game, one of the ones where you look back on and just think, oh, if only things had happened differently. Obviously, Granit Xhaka got sent off at the start of the second half. Arsenal were well on top, looked well on, well on course to go on and win that game. Xhaka gets himself sent off stupidly and um, Arsenal going lose it to a Bamiyang own goal. It was just classic uh, sort of period of that season, that time of the season for Arsenal where everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Um, they'll be certainly looking to bounce back from that. Obviously, Tottenham won again last night, beating Fulham 1-0. That moves them further ahead of Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal still in with an outside chance of top four. You think it's very, very unlikely. A lot of teams are going to have to drop points and Arsenal are going to have to pretty much go on a very, very impressive winning run between now and the end of the season. Talking about the top four, Mikel says, well, the aim is to go on and beat Burnley. We've been chasing a top four place for a while, but it's not in our hands. The only thing we can control is our own results and performances. We are fully determined to do better than we have done in the past eight months. So not ruling out a spot in the top four. I think Mikel certainly knows that given the way the season has gone so far and given the amount of teams that are ahead of Arsenal and in a better position to get a top four spot, I think he's well aware that it's very, very difficult. To be honest, it's very it's looking pretty difficult to get a top six spot now. Um, Arsenal's miserable run, as I hinted, uh, hinted at earlier but in November and December, has certainly caused them an awful lot of problems, despite their upturn in form since Christmas. Uh, right, let's talk about some transfers, shall we? Obviously, we are a w fair way away from the transfer window opening, but there is plenty of rumours doing the round. I discussed some of them yesterday, and I'll uh, discuss a couple of other stories that have been published recently, um, starting with Ibrahima Kanate. Um, I hope I got that pronunciation right. I'm sure if I haven't, then you plenty of you will correct me in the comments. Um, he has been linked with Arsenal. Simon Collings, excellent reporter over at the Standard, uh, reported yesterday that he's one of the centre-backs Arsenal are keeping an eye on this summer. Obviously plays for RB Leipzig, very young, 21 um, centre-back and uh, looks like a very good player. Manchester United, I think, have been linked with him as well. I think it's an interesting one, the centre-back situation, because I think the centre-backs we're going to see... Obviously, Arsenal have got lots of them at the moment, so you kind of think, why do you need another centre-back, especially with the Saliba situation? But I think you've got to take that Saliba situation into account. 
I don't think is a foregone conclusion that Saliba will return and be an Arsenal player next season. I hope it is. Obviously, Arsenal are saying that he's still very much part of their plans. That is the word that's come from Arsenal when they let him out on loan. But you do wonder how that relationship is between, say, Arteta and the player. We've seen the player talk pretty openly about his, about Arteta since he's left on loan and joined at Nice. You know, is that a relationship that can certainly be fixed and workable for next season? I think the decision will be made on that in the summer. So whatever happens with Saliba, if it is decided that maybe it's best for all parties that he moves on and kickstarts his career somewhere else, I hope it's not. But if it does, then Arsenal could well be looking to bring in another centre-back. You've got the David Luiz situation. Obviously, he's out of contract. Will he get a new deal or not? That's something that will be decided in the summer. What happens with Callum Chambers? as well obviously we've seen recently Mustafi and Socrates has gone so although a while ago it might have seemed ridiculous to suggest Arsenal were going to be looking at centre-backs uh, this summer there is some work that probably may well need to be do uh, may need to be done in that regard I think the sort of guaranteed centre-backs for a while now are Pablo Mari, Gabriel, uh, Rob Holding you know those three are here to stay for a fair while but then you look at the rest of them maybe not so it Although Arsenal very well stocked, we haven't even mentioned Mavropanos, who's been doing well over at Stuttgart. Um, so although Arsenal are very well stocked on paper when it comes to centre-backs, come the summer, it might be very, very different. And this is what Simon reports, that he is one of the players that Arsenal are looking at um, as a potential centre-back option this summer. I think as Simon puts in his uh, piece that Champions League football could well be key to uh, that A because of his price tag and B would he really want to leave Leipzig or choose Arsenal over potentially other interesting clubs should they not be in the Champions League so as is away with a lot of these signings at the moment Champions League looks like it could well be key to that one a couple of other rumours doing at the rounds let's go quickly to Odison Edward as well a player I spoke about yesterday a player Arsenal very much like and has been on their agenda for a while as a potential striker target reports in the Daily Mail that Leicester believe they are very close to getting that one done now for Edward and that they are in pole position I mentioned yesterday that Leicester are very much ones to watch in that obviously they're managed by Brendan Rodgers who was the manager who signed Edward from PSG to Celtic had a very good relationship with him knows exactly what he's about and how you get the best out of him and uh, Edward obviously had a good relationship with Rodgers as well and the Daily Mail reporting that that relationship could be key in terms of winning the race uh, for the Celtic striker who does look likely to leave Scotland this summer. £15 million as well. If that fee is correct, then you think that's, you know, looks like it's going to be a bit of a bargain because although he hasn't had the greatest of season this season, he's been very good in Cel up at Celtic. He's, a lot of scouts like him and what they see and what they think he could um progress into in terms of a top class striker so 15 million does not seem like an awful lot of money at all um, and if that is indeed what Leicester end up paying for him that that could prove to be a very very wise piece of business few reports in um, in Italy I think Calcio Mercato have been um, suggesting that Arsenal are still very much in for Husimawa at Lyon. They sort of link that into a report where they're saying that Juve still want him as well and potentially Manchester City. The thing with Arwa for me, why I think Arsenal might have missed a boat in Arwa, uh, on Arwa, and I'm not saying it d definitely because we'll have to wait and see. As I said yesterday's video, you've got to wait and see where Arsenal finish, how much money comes in. You know, Can they somehow sneak into the Champions League? That opens up a whole new box of possibilities in terms of what they can do with uh uh, with potential new signings in the summer. Should that happen and should there be money available, they might well go in for Arwa again. But I just think it kind of feels like if they were going to get something done for him last season was, uh, last summer was probably the most, was the best time to do it. Just, and when you look at what Leon have done this season, you know, they're honing, they're certainly in the, very much in the title race in France. They think they can win it. They had a great win. Arwa scored the winner at, um, at the weekend um, for them. And they could well end up beating PSG this season. So they'll be in the Champions League next year. We know that Jean-Michel Wallace is a very, very tough negotiator. He may well have come to some sort of agreement with Armour last summer. To say, give me one more year and you can go this summer. But even if that is the case, he's not going to go for cheap. And that could be the main issue for Arsenal. Because we know finances are an issue at the Emirates. Uh, as they were are elsewhere as well but if Arsenal can't get Champions League football then I think it's probably going to be very very hard to land uh, Arwa given how much it'll cost and given how many other top top clubs will be looking at him 
Right, so that's about it for transfers sort of roundup today. But I wanted to talk a little bit about that Steve Morrow interview that I mentioned at the start of this video. As I said, it's in the comments section below. So give it a read after you've watched this video. Um, obviously, Steve was head of youth recruitment at Arsenal. He left this sort of just over a year ago now um, as part of the big restructuring that, that, that took place. Um, sort of left by mutual agreement, really. Um, after a fair few discussions with the new hierarchy, Steve was very much an Arsene Wenger man, was brought in by Wenger, having been a player at Arsenal a long, long time ago, left, went to America, was in charge of FC Dallas, left there 2008, I think it was, ended up coming back to Arsenal and has been there for the best part of a decade. Um, Wenger asked him to be head of youth recruitment. He did that very, very well for nearly a decade, like I said, very well respected. But when Wenger left, Gazidis left, everyone like that, and the new hierarchy came in, Edu came in, it all began to change. Morrow was a potential candidate for the technical director role, had conversations with Raul Sinehi about that, didn't get it in the end, and uh, ultimately they decided it would be best for all parties maybe if he were to move on and look for an opportunity elsewhere. There is another part of the video that focuses on that side of things, uh, sorry, on that interview that focuses on that side of things that will be coming out soon. But this today's video, uh, today's sorry, interview that came out was mainly focused on his time as head of youth recruitment and some of the players he nearly signed, who did sign, um, losing Serge Gnabry. But he talked some interesting stories about Sancho, um, Bellingham, Pulisic, you know, how close Arsenal came to signing these players. Um, I'll just tell you a few quotes quotes from it now but as I said you can give the interview a read below it says every top club will say they were near misses Jaden was certainly one of those we missed out on him once when he moved from Watford and went up to Manchester City and then again when he reached the age at City when young players reach when they have to make a choice Jaden felt at that time his future was away from Manchester and we were very very close to signing him but the family felt that the best opportunity for him was at Dortmund and off he went there have been others. Jude Bellingham was another one that was very similar to that when he came to the end of his contract at Birmingham was debating whether to stay and sign a scholarship or move elsewhere. We were very close to that one as well. Sometimes it just doesn't happen and you have to accept it. So another a few more players to add to the Arsenal almost signed, uh, not even 11 now. It's like a full-blown 25-man Premier League squad. How close they came to signing some absolute top, top talent over the years. Also talks about Christian Pulisic. He says, through our connections in the States, Christian was one I actually had over at London Colney as a 14-year-old. Uh, he came in, did quite well, but he was very small and underdeveloped phys physically when he came to us. I did see his potential, but he was certainly behind physically in terms of the same age group of our boys. I wanted to bring him back again, but it just didn't work out and he went to Germany, unfortunately. So Pulisic, Bellingham, Sancho, three more players there who were very, very close at one point to sign in for Arsenal. Um, right, a little bit of talk now before we go about the big game tomorrow at Turf Moor. Arsenal, can they build on the momentum of that fantastic win last weekend up at Leicester? Um, it's always a tough place to go at Burnley. We know that. I think it was a nil-nil draw, very dour nil-nil draw there last season uh, for Arsenal. Um, and Arteta has got some real sort of selection headaches to make for this one. It's a nice position for him to be in, really, uh, given where he has been before when it comes to selection headaches. But how well Arsenal played last week at Leicester is certainly going to come into the equation. You know, who plays? I think we're going to rule Smith-Rowe out on this one. Um, looks very, very unlikely that Smith-Rowe will be involved. So if you rule him out, it's the big question, really. You probably think is who is going to play on the left because Saka, you think, is going to come back in on the right. You imagine Odegaard is going to be number 10 and then it's going to be between who plays on the left. Is it going to be uh, Pepe or is it going to be Willian? Both the two standout players for Arsenal last week um, against Leicester. Willian was excellent. We've been waiting all season for a performance like that. Very, very good. But then Pepe was fantastic as well. Scored a goal. Absolutely destroyed Thomas, the Leicester fullback. I'm sure still having nightmares about him. Um, and it, yeah, it's a real, it's a really difficult one for Mikel. Obviously, he's also got to think ahead to the game against Olympiacos on Thursday night, and then Tottenham the following Sunday um, before the second leg. So it's a really key two weeks for Arsenal now, um, and he'll have to probably think about that when he's naming his teams and. Um, deciding who is going to play where but you'd think because there's four days to go before the Burnley game uh, before the Olympiacos game and they've had the whole week off that you'd think he'll go very very strong at Turf Moor and so you, you kind of look at the, that position on the left side of the attack because you would say that Saka is going to come back in having going to be, been given a rest last week it's going to be is it, who is it Willian or Pepe on the left I think at centre-back you've got a big decision to make as well there's so many pushing for starts there holding Mary um, both 
playing really well together, I think. Um, two top centre-backs, in my opinion. And then Louise, who's playing very well at the moment. And Gabriel, I still think Gabriel's looking pretty shaky at the moment. I have to say, I thought he was shaky in the second half against Benfica. Um, it didn't play last weekend, obviously, um, against Leicester. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough one. It's a, it's difficult. I mean, I, I really like Pablo Mari. I have to say, every time I see Pablo Mari play, I think he's an excellent, excellent centre-back. Um, and so it's a tough one for Mikel about who plays at that centre-back. You've got four, four good, good players pushing for a start there who are all playing pretty well. And I think you've got, you know, is party going to start at centre-back? That's another one, uh, sort of centre-midfield. Is that something Arteta is going to decide on? And then you've got the whole Bellerin versus Cedric um, debate at right-back. So some Big decisions for Mikel to make um, ahead of the Burnley game. Some nice nice ones for a manager. You want selection headaches, and he's certainly got that. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the starting eleven is that he ends up deciding on. In terms of the team news for it, not too bad, unless any, anything's happened that we don't know about at training this week. Smith Rowe, obviously had the hip injury that forced him off last week. Mikel saying he's had the scan at the beginning of the week and it doesn't look significant. You would think he's still going to be unavailable for this weekend's, weekend's game and that's going to come too soon for him. But other than that, it's only Alex Runnison who's been struggling with injuries. So Arsenal looking pretty tidy in terms of the team news and injury department at the moment, which is good news, especially considering how demanding the fixture schedule has been. Um... And then let's just end this video on my predicted 11, shall we? I think this one's going to be a hard one to call. Obviously, as I mentioned, there's some real selection headaches for Mikel. And I think you've got to look ahead to those upcoming fixtures as well. And they've always got to be in the back of your mind. So this is the 11 that I'm predicting Mikel's going to go for. This isn't the one that I want to see or that I've had any information about. This is just the one that I'm predicting Mikel is going to get end up going for. I am going to go with Leno in goal. I'm going to say Bellerin at right back. Gabriel and Louise as the two centre-backs. Tierney at left back. Xhaka and Partey as a central midfield. I'm going to go with Saka on the right. Odegaard as number 10. And I'm going to go Pepe on the left. And then Bamiang up front. Um, it'll be interesting to see how wrong that turns out to be because I imagine it probably will be. And there'll be a few different um, selection calls for Mikel. I think the Willian Pepe one is really, really interesting because you waited for so long to see Willian have a good game. Do you really want to take him out when he finally has one? But Pepe, you know, it'd be a real hammer blow to his confidence if he doesn't play, having played so well at Leicester. And he scored four goals in his last seven Premier League starts now, Pepe as well. He's playing very well and in excellent form. So difficult one for Mikel to go for, but this, that, I'll just run through it one more time. My predicted 11, Leno, Bellerin, Luis, Gabriel, Tierney, Xhaka, Party, Saka, Odegaard, Pepe and Aubameyang. Let me know what you think obviously always put them in the comments below tell me what selection you want to see right thanks for watching everyone appreciate your time as always enjoy the rest of your friday and i will see you tomorrow at turf more have a good day